Good morning, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Side Hustle Tuesdays. Today's episode is episode 108. For those of you guys who are new to the channel or new to this series, Side Hustle Tuesdays is a series we used to do here where we would tell the story of an entrepreneur with a side hustle they started outside of their 9 to 5 job with little to no money and with skills they either had or quickly acquired. The goal of these stories is to give you inspiration as well as ideas for launching side hustles of your own. This is a series we did a few years back, but at one point had stopped, and last week we brought it back for the first time in a long time and featured the business Get a Brick, which you can find at getabrick.com, B-R-I-K.com, in episode 107. Get a Brick is a business which found a unique way to sell knives by packaging them in bricks of concrete and gamifying the sale by having it be somewhat of a mystery which knife you're going to get, as well as essentially giving you a lottery ticket inside which you could enter a code and have a chance of winning an expensive handmade craftsman knife. If you haven't seen that episode, check it out, link in the description box below, as well as a link to our Side Hustle Tuesday playlist where you can catch up and watch all the previous episodes. In today's story, we're going to be talking about an Irishman named John, who after three failed attempts at drop shipping, managed to find success on his third try. As they say, the third time's a charm. John's drop shipping business is now bringing in over $25,000 a month, more than he ever could have dreamed of. Today's story is about John Murphy. John is an Irishman married to an Italian woman, and her job kept them moving all around Italy, which left John constantly having to find new jobs each time they moved. With the job market not being great, John asked his boss for permission to work remotely following his and his wife's next move, and his boss agreed. After working from home for a while, John quickly realized he could never again go back to an office. This inspired John to learn some additional skills to be able to work on his own terms and to be able to work remotely forever. After a bit of research, John settled on the hustle or the business of dropshipping. I assume most of you guys know what dropshipping is, but dropshipping is a fulfillment model in which a marketer or e-commerce seller partners with a manufacturer or another company whose products they can sell. This means they set up a store and market the store's products, but their dropshipping partner or manufacturer uh, manufactures a product, holds inventory, and ships the product out for them. John initially did a little bit of research online and began with AliExpress dropshipping. His first attempt was a general store selling everything under the sun, and after a month, John found that he had spent $300 on advertising, but had only made $50 in sales, netting him a $250 loss. John then set out on his second attempt. This time, he began a prepping and survival store, uh, selling things like fire starters, emergency blankets, and water filters. This has always been a popular niche and is getting even more popular with recent events like COVID, COVID lockdowns, the recent government overreach, and people worrying about all the money printing going on and hyperinflation. And while this was a profitable business for John, it wasn't really what he was looking for, and the profits weren't really where he needed them to be, so John once again moved on seeking out another niche. John began by creating a list of 100 random products and slowly began eliminating them one by one by looking at criteria like weight, competition. He wanted some competition to prove the concept, but not so much competition that he wouldn't be able to make sales. He also looked at price point. Now, the topic of high ticket versus low ticket drop shipping is a controversial one. Some people like low ticket impulse buy type items, while others like John uh, are seeking out high ticket items as you have to sell less items to turn a decent profit. And John settled on the idea of finding a high ticket item to sell. Eventually, John settled on electric bikes. Now, an interesting thing about electric bikes, these have been popular for a number of years. However, they seem to be, get, to be getting more popular recently as the advances in battery technology have allowed the price point to come down. It's also made the bikes more powerful and allowed the batteries to last longer and give a longer range. An interesting side note, my parents were recently down in Florida for a few weeks and my parents took a sunset bike tour, which happened to be on electric bikes. And seeing as how my future plans are moving down to Florida to start a new business, uh, I can't take Illinois any longer. Our state is a fi financial mess. The mask wearing and business closures have made this state unlivable, and I'm planning a move. Anyhow, my dad mentioned while chatting with the guy running the bike tour uh, that the guy told him a bit about his background in the business. The guy was either in his late 20s or early 30s. He had graduated from culinary school and begun climbing the ladder in his career as a chef. 
but he found he was working 80 to 100 hour weeks and was burnt out. So he ultimately wound up quitting his job and moving down to Sarasota, Florida, and he began renting electric bikes as well as doing sunset bike tours for tourists. He's doing something he loves. He's having a lot of success and making a good income and enjoying life a lot more. I'm hoping to connect with this guy for a future episode of Side Hustle Tuesdays. Uh, I realize this is a bit off topic, but it is on the topic of e-bikes. Anyhow, back to John's story. John realized by selling e-bikes, he would only have to sell two to four bikes a month to actually turn a decent side income of a couple thousand dollars, as opposed to have, having to sell hundreds or even thousands of random widgets or lower priced items. A few months in, John had made a few sales, but things hadn't really taken off, and he was starting to give up hope. It was around this time that John learned that a leader in the space was quitting his job and shut, or quitting his business and shutting down his e-bike store. John set up a call with the man and picked his brain and learned a number of helpful tips. I think this is a good thing to touch on briefly as well. In last week's story of Get a Brick, the guys had mentioned how surprised they were and how willing people were to help you out when you asked for help and to provide some insights. Anyhow, two things John took away from this conversation were trust and social proof and how important they were. John took this tip and tweaked his website. One thing he did was add one of those pop-ups that say, you know, Jim from Chicago just bought an e-bike. Well, as marketers, we know these are fake and they seem cheesy. They do seem to work, and this provides both social proof and trust. John did a lot more than this, however. If you look at John's website, it's not a one-page website. John has a resource page on his site where he educates consumers about e-bike laws in their state, i.e. can you ride them on, on the road or do you have to ride them on trails. He also provides guidance about riding e-bikes on federal lands and has information about calculating the range of an e-bike. He has also put together an About Us page. He has an 800 number and actually offers customer service. He offers a generous return policy and even has a page on his website called Why Should You Trust Us, where he lays out why you should trust him as a company and, a, and lays out such things as that the site is safe and secure, customer service is a high priority, they have the lowest pricing and a price match guarantee, and they ensure their shipments. Another th clever thing John did is offer financing through Klarna. For anyone who sells high ticket items, uh, or even really any items, if you already aren't doing financing, look into services like Sezzle, Klarna, and others. You'll be amazed by how many people will finance even cheap items, but especially with high ticket items like John's, this is even more helpful to customers as not everybody has $1,000, $1,500, $2,000 to lay out uh, on a purchase at once. This business was launched back in late 2017, but today John is making upwards of $25,000 a month. I think there's a lot of good takeaways from John's story. First off, you likely won't succeed on your first attempt. It took John three attempts, and after each one, he learned something along the way that helped him on his next. I think it's also important to note that John didn't take the short-term approach of finding a winning product and riding that. John built an actual business and took the time to build trust among his customers and future customers. Overall, John has done a bang-up job, and I think there's a lot we can learn from this story. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Side Hustle Tuesdays. I'll link to John's store down below, along with last week's episode of Get a Brick and the Side Hustle Tuesdays playlist if you'd like to watch some previous episodes. Thanks for watching, and until next week, this is Rules for Rebels and Side Hustle Tuesdays, signing out.